Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes, Hayes' World of Math. We are formalizing how to do confidence intervals for proportions, and we're gonna give you a four-step process that if you follow it and make sure the math's good, you're going to be able to get four points on this question on your AP exam. We're going through the stats medic lessons, so we're going to formalize this, and if you look down over here, I should really fix my F keys. Anyway, so here is the estimating the population in the four-step process. We talked about in the previous day, state, plan, do, conclude. So when you state things, you're going to state the parameter and the confidence level of what's going on. Sorry, I need my pointer. This works better. So the parameter and the confidence level. So I am, P, P is whatever's going on in the population, confidence level 95, 97, 99, whatever. The plan, we're going to name the procedure that we're going to do. So in this case here, we ended up doing a one sample Z interval for proportions. Check your conditions. Check, 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 check. And this is going to hold true for any confidence interval that we're going to do. So that's why this is very general. We're going to come back to this actually in unit seven. Do, we're going to write, you need to write down the general formula, which is generally in English. So then that way you understand the concepts, specific formulas, so you can fill in the parts correctly. You're going to plug in the numbers to show that you know where things are going. And then you're going to calculate all the numbers so we can figure out what the interval actually is. And then the last step, in which case probably the most important step, and one of the steps that many people get wrong when they're trying to do statistics, um, is interpret the interval in context. All right. Tell us what this number here means in relationship to what's going on up here with your parameter. Okay. So that is always going to look like we are 95% confident that. Fill in the blank. Now, for choosing a sample size, we kind of alluded to this in the last little part of the um, experience there, but um, I want to point out a couple of things that hopefully you will find helpful. So, first of all, there's your formula. Okay, nothing new there. Your margin of error is z hat, or is it can be z star times the square root of p hat minus one p hat times the quantity one minus p hat, all of that divided by n. And to figure out what, how big of the sample size you need, you're going to go through and you're going to solve for n. And we're going to do some examples like that down below. Couple of things to point out. <clears throat> if you do not know what p hat is, okay, use 50% for p hat. It's a conservative calculation. Why? Remember back to your geometry class, okay? There was always those problems of like, a, you have 100 meters of fencing and what's the largest area that you can find? And it invariably, if you were involving all four sides, made it into a square. So watch what happens. So if I take 50% times 50%, I'm going to get 0.25. And if I go any smaller than that, let's say 40 times 60%, that turns into 24%. What happens if I go 30 and 70? That becomes 21. And so on and so on. And so obviously, well, I only skipped one there. Uh, zero nine. Okay. So the largest number that you can have for your numerator is when those two values are equal. And so that's why if we're not sure, we're going to assume everything's the same on both sides. And that will make sure if we're playing it conservatively that what we're seeing is our best case or is the worst case scenario of what's going on, all right? The other thing to point out here is that when we're calculating out for N, you're going to end up, if you get a decimal, you're always going to round up. So let's say I'm coming through and there's a couple of reasons for this. And I got na 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 na, -na N equals 3.5 or let's say 36.7 children. Actually, even let's make that a four because if it ended in 37, it would make sense, right, to round up to 37. But what happens if it's 34? And we've alluded to this earlier in the or earlier in the class, but two things. First of all, if you're going to have 0.4 of a child. That's not going to work. So you need to go and finish the next child, as it were. So you're going to go to 37. The other thing that it does is that, remember, if I'm dividing by a larger and larger number, what will end up happening is then you're guaranteeing that you need at least that many. So you're going to be within the confidence interval. So if I have a confidence interval here for 36.4, if I divide it by 37, that's going to put my actual answer somewhere in closer in between. And so then that way it will probably be a little bit more solid. All right. 
So with those ideas in mind, we're going to go through some examples. Um, so go ahead and hit pause, and then you can talk about this community activist group in Austin, Texas. About, uh, what is it? No, they don't even tell you what it's about. They just want to have something on the ballot. So we'll see you in a minute. So we're going to go through this, and I decided that it might be best, just given all the math involved, that we would kind of walk through this together. <clears throat> so the first thing that they're asking, they're saying, okay, 81.3% of the signatures must be valid. And so they need, because they need 20,000 out of the 24,598. And so could you really go through and check all of those? Yes. Do you think the county? Do you think that the election committee has time to pay, or time and money to pay somebody to do that? Not typically, okay? So what you're going to end up doing is you're going to take a random sample of signatures, and the individual checking those signatures needs to be 95% confident that that true proportion of the valid signatures estimated within a 2% margin of error. So a couple of things. So we care about 95% confident, and we have a 2% margin of error. And we're saying we want a conservative estimate. So this is going to become my margin of error. Actually, I usually write it as MOE, sorry. Equals 95% confident. That gives me a number of 1.96. That's my Z star score. And then my proportion, which is coming from, wait, it's way up. Wait, we don't even care because we're going to go 50-50. We want to make sure that we're going to check so many signatures that we're fine. Okay. So we're going to go through and we're going to say, all right, 50 times 50. Oops. This is why you do it all ahead of time, Mr. Hayes. Yeah, well, just want to make sure you guys know I'm human. And then I'm going to divide it by n. Well, Mr. Hayes, how do we figure out n? Don't worry about it. We got this. Couple different ways you could go through and do this. Um, actually, here, I will go ahead and show you this just because I think it's worth it. So I have 0.02 is equal to 1.96 square root of. I'm going to multiply that out and get that. All right. And I get n. I'm going to move this to the other side by division. Let's make sure that's there. Okay. How do I get rid of the square root? I square this. If I square this, I have to square this entire thing. So now this becomes 0 0.02 over 1.96 squared. That's going to be 0 0.25 over n. So to get n out of the denominator, you've got a couple of different things here. Easiest thing to do is treat this as one big number and put that over one. So when I swap those two, you end up getting what we're going to get up here of n is equal to this 0.25 divided by this side over here. So 0 0.02 over 1.96 squared. And when you do all of that, you're going to come up with a number that is 2,401 signatures. So that's, you know, a lot better than checking 21 or 24,598 signatures, right? So moving on. So let's see, signatures. Part B, this in the activist's previous petition, 85% of the signatures were valid. Using this value as a guess for p hat, find the sample size needed for the margin of error at most 2% percentage, two percentage points with a 95% confidence. How does this compare with what we're doing for number one? We're going to go through and do something similar. Okay, so I've got 0 0.02 is equal to 1.96. Now, what happens if I plug in p hat at 85%? So again, up here, remember, we're assuming that half the signatures are bad, half the signatures are good. Here, we're going to say 85% of the signatures are good and 15% don't work or aren't valid. And then I'm going to put that over n. Using a similar procedure to what we did here, we're going to get n is equal to, if I multiply this out, 0 0.1275 divided by all of this. Oops, I almost did two zeros. One point nine six squared. 
And when you do that, I'm going to get 1,224.51. So we are going to say we need to check 1,225 signatures. Now notice this is much smaller. But we knew that. Okay, We knew that was going to be the case because we said this is the most conservative. If we want to double check, we're going to go check 2,401 signatures. If we kind of know what's going on, we do 1,225. Now, what if the company pre de present dem ugh, demands a 99% confidence interval instead of a 95% confidence interval? Would you require a smaller or larger sample size, assuming everything else remains the same? Explain your answer. So, remember, so if we're going to be... more confident that's going to make the interval larger. Okay. So if we're making the interval larger, the way we combat that is to make the sample size smaller. Let's say counter combat sounds all aggressive. And I can't run for president later and all that. So to counter this, we should increase the sample size. Okay. There we go. Confidence intervals. Now notice, this is like the third or I think second, third, fourth time that we've done a question like that. So that should give you an idea that that type of thing this type of question is going to happen somewhere. This is a perfect type of question, honestly, that would be good for a uh, multiple choice question. So that might be something you want to consider, put back in the back of your mind. So confidence intervals, state, plan, do, conclude. And this right here is going to be helpful, particularly if you're setting up studies so that you have an idea of how big of a sample do I really need to make it work if I want to be this precise. Good luck on your homework. We've got one more um, session to go through and do. We're going to talk about what happens when you have a difference of proportions. Very similar idea, but we just need to make sure that we get some things straight up. But we'll talk to you then. Bye.